I'm back with episode number two of the Slip Slip Ginge Knitting Podcast. How are you all doing? Before we even start anything, you'll have noticed a few changes. We'll get on to that. But first of all, thank you. Thank you to every single one of you that has subscribed, watched, liked, commented, followed me on Instagram, engaged with me down there, added me as a friend on Ravelry, and got in touch with me through that platform as well. You're all amazing. I made a podcast two weeks ago, and something, I don't know what it was, but for some reason it, it I, I, I'm not going to say it went viral, because it didn't go viral, but it's, it's had nearly eight and a half thousand views, and I've now got nearly one and a half thousand subscribers, so... I was hoping that I'd have a bit of time and maybe one day, if I ever got to a milestone like that, I could do a giveaway or something like that. And you've all beaten me to it. Thank you very much, genuinely, because that's massive. That means an awful lot. There are viewers from Canada, the States, Europe, Australia, New Zealand, everywhere. You've all been getting in touch and saying how great things are, so thank you every single one of you that has engaged with this on on this platform. I'm, I'm baffled. <laughs> I'm absolutely baffled, but thank you all so, so much for all your support. One thing I will say, though, is that there's been seven dislikes. Whoever you are, go away. No one likes you. There we go. Don't need to say any more from that, but thank you everyone that liked it. There are a thousand likes. <laughs> I, I don't I wow thank you thank you so much one thing I have noticed though which is a bone that I need to pick with all of you is that 94.7 percent of you are not subscribed go go and click it go and click it I dare you but thank you to everyone that has subscribed you are all wonderful people and you've all been engaging and I can't thank you enough so yes you are all wonderful people thank you let's go on before I get soppy Item number two on the agenda for today is I got a couple of comments about lighting. Just just a couple. O only only two or three. There's, there's quite a few. Is this better for you? I have made some changes. I have moved my sofa to here. The window is there now there. I can lounge back and relax. But also I am using some lighting. You see the windows there, but shadows are from here. You can see eh? that's good and also we're now filming in 4k so if you really want to get that crisp stitch content click on 4k for your hd settings and you, you won't regret it i promise although saying that looking at me today in 4k is probably not something you want to do but anyway let's crack on with the video i am jack i'm slip slip ginge on ravelry instagram and here on youtube you can add me follow me subscribe all that jazz and I will keep reminding you to do that throughout this video. But as every video starts in the knitting world, we start with our finished objects. So I have one and a half for you, which is very good. One of them I finished before the first attempt at filming this podcast. This is the third attempt because the first one, um, it just didn't work. And the second one, the bin men decided to come along. But the first finished object is the Ravenclaw scarf. It is done. I have loved this project. It's been a real joy. It's been really simple, really easy. It's a great length and it's done. This is not for me. This is for Jen at Chonky Stitches, who is my wonderful partner, who is also a podcaster. She uploaded her first podcast two days after I released mine and she is filming one today as I'm filming this. So go and check her out. Her links are in the description. She has a shop as well. So go and support small businesses. And we'll be talking about Jen throughout this video. But if you are a crocheter, definitely go and check her out because I am not a crocheter yet. But anyway, I digress. This is the Ravenclaw scarf. It's an adaptation of the semi charm scarf by Elizabeth Smith, which is a free pattern on Ravelry. And this had a total of 47 ends to sew in, which was fun, but I really enjoyed working on it. It's a wonderfully written pattern. It's very clear. It's super simple. It doesn't need blocking. I will probably block it at some point, but it has this gorgeous I-cord edging that you can see here, which means that it constantly lays flat. Genius. I'm going to do that on every scarf I ever make because it also makes it feel really super squishy. We love squishy things here. One thing I will say is I won't be throwing stuff because behind, well, in front of me is now a tripod lights and my desk, which is where I do lots of music recording and things like that. 
You may have heard some music or still be hearing music. I don't know. It depends how I edit this together. That is all from me. There are links in the description. Go and check that out too. You can see that from the stitch marker, I had done from this side up to there and I've gone round and back. So I've done a good amount. I've used a total of two skeins, one in the colourway Harmony and one in the colourway Mind by West Yorkshire Spinners in their Chunky Roving Retreat yarn, which is 100% wool. And it has, you can see the halo on it up there. It's, it really is just incredible. It's really squishy. I love it. This isn't for me though, this is going to Jen, but I have the wool to make myself one. So Jen, come and get your scarf. Again, I really love the pattern on this. I really love the wool. It's great to work with and it's soft against the skin. It's not too scratchy for me personally. So I will definitely be using more of that yarn in the future. My next half finished object is one of my Brunos Sockens by Lean Olzeth. Sorry, I keep forgetting your name. I'm so sorry. This is knitted up in Koopnitz Soxia DK in the colorways Chiron and Astroplaniti. It's a DK sock weight yarn. And I have finished the sock. You can see where I got to. And I have since then done the foot and the toe. But now, because of lighting, I can now show you the detail properly. Look at that, isn't it gorgeous? Um, it, it's really, really good. It's so soft, so squishy. I did a German short row heel on these instead of the uh, heel flap and gusset, which was recommended with the pattern because I've never done one and I just wanted to get these socks done. However, I did do a different toe. I normally do a wedge toe, but this is a star toe decrease, which I've never done before and I prefer it because I find that the the uh, the wedge toe is, it just looks a bit ridiculous, whereas these look like sock toes now. But I'm really, really happy with these. They are so soft. I did a slightly shorter foot length so that it fits snugly on the foot, but this bit's still a bit baggy because I, there's bigger needles. I'm limited to what needles I have. I've really, really enjoyed this. And what I'm going to show you next is the other sock. But before that, I will say I did have a comment on my, I think it was actually a, a DM on Instagram at Slip Slip Ginge, where someone asked what needles I use. When I'm knitting, I will show you this while I show you the second sock, which is an exact contrast of the other sock, and I'm partway through the rib. But anyway, here we are. The needles I use are the Nipro Symphony Interchangeable Circular Needles. When I'm knitting uh, general four-ply socks, I use Chalgoos or High High Steels. I find the sharps, they, they pierce my fingers, so I generally use the steels instead. And I, if I'm working flat, I use either Nipro Symphonies or Nipro Zings. Any needles work for knitting. You do not need fancy yarn. You do not need fancy needles. I'm just a bit of a snob, I guess. But yes, my first whip to show you is the second sock from the Brunos Sockens. I love them. There isn't really much to say apart from I need to work more on the rib. And then it's colour work, which I'm very excited about because I am obsessed with colour work. And they have been living in my... Just just one more row bag, which thank you again to Paul and Judith for that. The next whip it is still a work in progress. I am so close to finishing the main part of this project, and I am so happy about that because it's taken me a long time, but it is what is going to be my Christmas jumper. And this is the... I mentioned all of this in the last video, apart from the next project, but everything else has been mentioned. But this is my Azure sweater. And you can see where I was up to and where I've gotten to. I'm on the rib now at the bottom. I added an extra inch to what the pattern said just because the, I realised that the jumper was actually written to be quite cropped and quite fitted. And I purposefully made a bigger pattern, but I still didn't want it to be cropped. So I've added an extra inch and a half before hitting the rib, which has been great. It's taking me ages, but I've been sat knitting this while watching Bake Off last night and things like that. This jumper is going to be fab. There were some comments about lighting and things like that. Obviously, we've spoken about it. We don't need to talk about it anymore. Now you can see it in all its glory and it's going to be fantastic. It's going to be... I, I don't know about the collar. I might make the collar a bit longer just so that it comes up a little bit. This is going to be super cosy um, and I love it. I really love it. Again, very similar theme to the Brunost Sockens. You can see that 
wasn't on purpose. I just love contrast when it comes to colour work. And this jumper is, it's had a few errors. Don't get me wrong, along the way, it's had a few errors. It's my first garment that I've ever knitted. But I am super proud of it and I will never frog this. Famous last words, check back on this video in a year's time. I love it. You can really see the colour work on there. It's with Rowan Felted Tweed in Seafarer and Ginger, I think are the two colours. Love it. There's the front, there's the back. Yeah, very much in love with this. So I didn't mention, but yes, this is the Azore Sweater by Orlane Such. And yeah, knitted with Rowan Felted Tweed. And there's also my little coffee stitch marker there that has tea in it. It's got a milky tea in it, whereas I'm currently drinking the leftovers of what is now a slightly cold cranberry and raspberry tea, um, which is very nice. If not a bit cold now that I'm recording this for the third time. But will you just let me knit in peace? I've had to say this a few times over the last two weeks. OK, I've. I'm really blasting through this. If I've missed stuff, sorry, but we've got we've got things to do and things to talk about. The next whip is actually the final whip. There is another one, which is the blankets, which are the 12 blocks of Christmas Cal by Olalana Knits, which I haven't done any more work on, I'm afraid, but I will hopefully get more of that done by Christmas because it is a Christmas project, although it was for 2019, I think. So I'm a couple of, I'm three years overdue, but that's not the point. The project I want to talk about is, there was a bit of a crisis with this, I'm not going to lie to you. I cast on the Revue socks. Um, I can't remember who the pattern was by now, but it will all be down here. And it was from the book Operation Sock Draw, which is a fantastic book. Lots of amazing techniques and really, really clearly written out. Great, great socks. And I tried the reverse socks, reviews, rev, 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 rev. I tried, I tried the first socks in the book. It was my first time doing lace work, so I was expecting to screw things up, but expecting to learn. And I did learn a lot. I learned a new cast on, and I learned how to do some slip stitch work, which was great. However, after a few rounds of the pattern, I had so many more stitches than what I needed. And after doing a bit of research on Ravelry, it was actually a misprint in the in the book, which was a real shame. And it really sort of put me off that pattern, which maybe one day I'll give it another go with the right pattern now that I've got that saved on my library on Ravelry. But for now, um, there's someone getting in the car. They're obviously going somewhere. Hello, neighbours. I'm just going to wait. I'm going to wait for the neighbours to finish sorting themselves out. Shut the door. Thank you. I took to Instagram after losing it with these socks and I said right Instagram help me out what should I cast on with my walk collection luxe sock in salt and pepper colorway and I had a couple of people mention about making a cowl which I thought was a fab idea I was here for it however I brought the wool to make socks so I had to make socks I didn't want to just make any vanilla socks so you all sent in some wonderful suggestions and I settled on the pattern by Erica Lauder. You probably know what I'm going to say. Luda, Lauder. The pattern is Hermione's Everyday Socks. And I cast these on once, got halfway through the leg, and I realised that I made a massive monumental error. So I started them again. This is where I'm up to. So here we go. You can see that I've done the rib, and I've also started to get a bit more yarn free. There we go. Uh, and I've also made a good dent on this. The texture doesn't come through a lot with this wool and I didn't want it to. I wanted it to have a bit of texture, but it's a variegated yarn. That's what for me I wanted to shine through with this project. And it's amazing. You can see the halo on it. Again, I'll go a bit closer. Uh, let's click there. There we go. Um, and they are absolutely gorgeous. I, I really can't fault this. The pattern is so well written and it's so clear the yarn's amazing this is the most popular sock pattern on Ravelry and it's free so if you've done some socks and you want to try another sock but you want to do something a bit different I highly recommend the Hermione's Everyday Socks. Right so I've just had to transfer um, 10 gig 
worth of video onto onto my laptop so that I can carry on filming. So I think I need to sort out my phone. However, acquisitions. Acquisitions are best when you didn't have to pay for the yarn. Am I am I right or am I wrong? I mean, I'm right, come on. So the first acquisitions are all from the same place. The day after I filmed the last podcast, Jen at Chonky Stitches came back from Whitby, where she went down for the Whitby Folk Week, which is a massive music festival, which I would have loved to have gone to, but I was here instead. While she was there, she went to find some yarn. And while she was there, she found a tiny shop called Propagansy. So it's a really small little shop. It's in Robin Hood's Bay in Whitby, if you live in the north of England. While she was there, she found some yarn. There is no company. We, there's no dyers. We don't know who made this, but we do know that it is hand spun. There are two colours. They're both 100 grams. They're both DK and they are a combination of alpaca and Falkland Corriedale. I have got two skeins of each of these. So again, we don't know where they are. There's no there's no yarn labels or anything like that. But these are the two. Really nice halo on it. And it's just really, really nice. There we go. It's so soft. It's it's woolly. Don't get me wrong, it is woolly. But I've I've got I've got four skeins of this, and I don't know what to do because I would have loved to have made a jumper out of this. I would love to make a jumper out of it, but their stuff is also all apparently small batch, so I will probably never get to buy this yarn or the right dye lots or anything again. But it's so sheepy and it's so soft. I love it. So thank you, Jen, very much for that. Apparently the lady that worked in there was really, really friendly, was really chatty, really lovely people that work there. So if you are in Whitby or around the north of England, go and check out Propagansy because their wool, if it's anything like this, is fantastic. The next acquisition has come from Jen. I rescued this yarn. I went on a bit of a rescue mission when I was last there helping her sort her yarn stash because, because she does so much amigurumi, she has lots of yarn in lots of different colours and it can get into quite the yarn bath. So while I was there, I was like, Jen, what is this yarn that is in this yarn bath? Because this needs to be saved. What is it? And it is a skein of Malabrigo Washted, which is a worsted weight of 100% merino wool in the air, in the, in the heirloom, in the colourway heirloom vegetable. So I've got it in a separate bag. I am still saving this yarn bath. I'm determined to get it saved. You can see here that that is all still to sort out. But the actual yarn itself is incredible. Here you go. This stuff is amazing. It's got so many earthy flecks in it. Um, it's beautiful. I love it. And I don't know what I'm going to make with it. Maybe a shawl? Don't know. Really not sure, but I need to... I'm trying. I'm trying really hard to save this. We'll get there eventually. But for now, it goes back in the bag. But that is something I've rescued from the Chonky Stitches headquarters. Hopefully it will be saved. I didn't, I've, I haven't cut it yet, but a lot of money has gone in the swear box with that. And finally, the last acquisition is also from Jen. Thank you, Jen, at Chonky Stitches. Uh, this is, all of these are currently in a bag from Yak, which is Yarn and Knitting, which is a really good shop in the south of England, in Brighton. And it is where I got my wool collection Lux sock wool from. And they have some very, very fancy yarn. But uh, she placed an order with Knit Picks. I believe it was Knit Picks. Yes, Knit Picks. And they unfortunately sent her the wrong weight of a yarn that she wanted to make for a hat, I believe, or a scarf, something like that. But she, she's she been starting to make herself things, which I've been encouraging her to do for quite a while. And now she is, and she's loving it. But they sent the wrong weight of yarn and she said, do you want me to send this back? They said, no, keep it. But Jen doesn't use fingering weight yarn. I do. So this is the Muse Dedication Speckle in four ply or fingering weight. Uh, 423 yards for 100 grams. It's 75% superwash merino and 25% nylon. 
you can machine wash it, tumble dry it, it's fab. And this is it, which is beautiful, I love it, it's, it's so gorgeous. It's got a little bit of a halo, you can sort of see a bit of a halo on there, but it's really soft. And I think this has to be, this has to be socks really. Or it could be a, it could be a cowl, it could, it could be anything, couldn't it? It's knitting for God's sake. I love this wool and I'm going to make something really nice in it. Whether I make it for Jen or not is another question, but very happy with that acquisition. So this brings me on to exciting news. If you've hung around for this long, thank you, because yeah, this is, this is some fun stuff. Jen at Chonky Stitches, she not only has her online shop at Chonky Stitches on Etsy and a website which I think is still under development, but is there... I think there's a few tweaks to make, but it is, it might be even done by the time this video goes out. I'm not sure, but definitely Etsy. She has got a couple of craft fairs in the Northeast in which I will be there helping her run the stall and knitting furiously while I, while we sell lots of goodies and we get to chat to lots of wonderful people. So the first one is on Sunday, the 25th of September and is the Ooseburn Markets. They are fab, really, really good. And we're really looking forward to that one. But the week after, the following Sunday, we're doing the Made Up North Fair, which is in the Boiler House in Newcastle upon Tyne. We will be there at that one as well. And lots of our crafty friends we know are also running stalls there. So if you want to come along and say hello, do come and say hello. Bring some goodies. Bring some knitting and crochet. Come and chat with us. Um, and yeah, it'd be great to hang out with some of you as well. So do come along to that if you're available. It would be wonderful to see you there. And... I think that is everything. I'm looking around in panic. Um, hmm, hmm. I think that's everything. So there are some plans for the next podcast, one of which is to definitely cast off the Azor sweater. I need to finish the other uh, Brunost socken. I want to get more of the Hermione's Everyday socks done, and I want to finish a square of the blanket. I'll try not to cast anything else on unless I finish something, but I can't. I can't guarantee that, I'm afraid, because there is also another Ravenclaw scarf to make. So we'll see what happens. I did also, I didn't mention in my acquisitions that I also got gifted some things by Jen, which are in this. I am a knitter. However, one thing that I have managed to acquire are some offhands of crochet needles. So I might have something in the works with crochet by the next time I film this. I don't know. But that was really kind of you, Jen. Thank you. Um, she has far too many crochet hooks, but I have far too many knitting needles to her, so it balances out. Anyway, I'm rambling. I'm finding things to talk about now. Thank you again to everyone that supported the channel and the videos and all my socials and everything else over the last two weeks. It's been really, really, really heartwarming to see. So thank you all so much for that. It's a, I was overwhelmed, blown away by it. So thank you for that. Thank you for subscribing. If you haven't already, you can do, because again, around 95% of you haven't subscribed yet. There's a button there, go click it. Go and click it. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at Slip Slip Ginge. You can find me on Ravelry at Slip Slip Ginge. There is also all the music that you've been hearing through the beginning and the end of this video, which there are also all the links to where you can go and get hold of that as well. Remember, Sunday the 25th of September, Sunday the 2nd of October, come and find us in Newcastle upon Tyne and we will do some catches ups, catch ups, that's the one. Um, where is also possibly some other trips that Jen and I have got planned where we might want to meet up with some crafty people. So follow us on Instagram as well and you will be the first to know. So thank you again to everyone that has commented liked and subscribed thank you to everyone that has mentioned me in their podcast since as well that was overwhelming thank you um and go and check out my stuff go and check out jen's stuff um go and check out everyone else's stuff all of the recommended videos over whatever side it is or down there depending on what device you're watching on go and check them out support them and i'm gonna shut up now see you on the next podcast what was that See you next time. Cheers.